thank you very much for your time, man. Long time. I assume you think things. Yeah. So what have you been up to, man? Um, you've been quiet a lot. I'm not uh, just been you know, uh, coaching for ten years. Mm. Yeah. Well, football, you know, we can't run away from football, you know, so I'm still in the process of football. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how are you finding it? Are you enjoying the coaching? Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's difficult, right? Yeah. You know, as time goes on, then you start learning a lot of students, start learning. Like, now you are in the opposite side. You are not a player anymore, so you need to be. Uh, you need to be nice um, because you can't do what you do when you are still playing soccer. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you are coming up against? The challenges that are coming up against sometimes to make the training sessions nice. Yeah. Like every player must be happy. Yeah. They train enough. Yeah. It also takes some time. You know, and, yeah, but so far so good for. Uh, it's a good, it's a, it's a good one. Yeah, and so now, um, obviously, um, coaching and playing are two different things. Um, so what have you been doing uh, to uh, make sure that that transition from being a player to coach uh, is happens very smoothly, and also that you are equipped as a coach to make sure that you have know how. You see, it, it took some time before, you know, when I when I started taking over. You know, yeah. I also wanted to play, but then, then I decided, no, but let me rather give the young boys a chance, you know. Yeah. So, even, and I also learned, like, you know, when you're coach, you must also be like a player. Yeah. So when there's one guy short, I always go and play with them. And stuff. But it's, um, it's a nice, it's... It's nice. It's yeah. not that, uh, that it wasn't that much of a adjustment because I I already know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Did you have to take any like coaching courses or anything like that? No, nothing yeah. yet. It, it was for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, I understand that you also have uh, one uh, of the former players, that is um, former Super Sport United player, Richard Ryan, also involved with the club. Yes, um, Richard is also involved with the team. Yeah. And me and Richard, we help each other a lot. Yeah. We, you know, he was playing for Super Sport and the team, so I was playing the Chiefs and a lot of coaches. So, when we sit and then we discuss and tactics and everything, yeah. everything goes well because we know why we are. Yeah. And we know as a soccer player, how do we do like you see. Yeah. Like for instance, I wasn't a guy that was always around. Yeah. And then you find Richard was a guy that was always around. Yeah. So we had to come together and sit down and, yeah. and discuss everything. Yeah. And talking about running, you see, you have always been like a player uh, with an opinion on how how coaching was being done. When we talk about running, there's one story that comes to mind, and that is the story of um, you and Mushine Tukdur. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Ah, oh, they always want to talk to run. So yeah. One day I just decided I can't be a horse. <laughs> because I said, no, let me either play football and see. Yeah. So we had a good fight, it was good, but after all, yeah. after training session, he laughed, he called me one side, and then, then, then I told him how I feel, you know. Yeah. Because you can't compare me with someone that is always in front. Yeah. 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 So what was that fight about? It was about running. Yes, yeah. I was like, you know, we can't just run. Then we don't know what I mean. So did you say that directly to Mushin? No, I sent to Funny. Then Funny went to Mushin. Funny Madira. Yeah. Yeah. Then he went to Mushin and said, "This is what I'm saying." <laughs> and how did Mushin take that? He was very angry. At me. Yeah. And that day, he told me if I'm not number one, the training session won't stop. And if I don't swim. So I remember everyone when they went for a um, water break. Yeah. They were pouring me with the water because I'm a guy that can't swim. So everyone was just uh, pouring me with the water. Oh, he's sweating. He's sweating. <laughs> so the credit session didn't stop until you. Yeah, that's the nice. 
what, what, what was that about? Were you, was it difficult for you? Was it because you were not getting uh, involved in training or you just don't sweat? I don't know, I just sweat in, in winter time, but some yeah. time I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I there's something with, uh, with my body, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But you've never been that player, as you say, you've never been that player that likes to, to run. Why is that? I like to, I like to run. Yeah. But I need to run with something. Yeah. I can't run without something. Yeah. It's like a, what, what is that running with something? I I have to run with a ball. With the ball. With the ball. Yeah. Yes. You make it run. Because I understand uh, that that's exactly what you said on that day. You kind of said um, something like, "Oh, we're still running again. Uh, when are we going to play football?" Is that what you said? Yeah. Because I'm saying this running and and not playing football for me it was like. What are we doing in training? Because yeah. we came to train in 2003. Yeah. So we want to play soccer. Yeah. So we want to improve maybe on your spare passes, on your finishing. But now you are just a game. Yeah, and that's why I say you were a player with a coaching opinion. Mm. What, what, what is important about um, the about training with the ball? Why, why is that important? Because um, a lot of times we see we see we see training sessions with um, players doing hard running, doing push ups, cross jump, and everything. So you you are you are not for that kind of training for football. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because you see, the generation of football yeah. also it also changes. Yeah. Like before, yeah. when we talk up in the eighties and the seventies, there was a lot of frog jumps and all those things. Yes. But as time went on, they find there's your journeys, there's your things that you can do in the gym that is much yeah. better. Yes. Because doing frog jumps, yeah. automatically you are doing it. Yeah. You see, so there was a lot of things that I. And I was against. Yeah. Because I I didn't believe in, in running the whole day. Yeah. If I have to run, let give give me the soccer ball. Yes, yeah, yeah. Let me run with the soccer ball. So if we run after running, let's play soccer. Yeah. Because in the game you are not gonna run for 90 minutes or something. Yes, yes, yes. You're gonna run and you're gonna think more. Mm. So you're going to think, you're going to pass, you're going to run into space. That sort of thinking, to think that football, uh, if you, football training must always involve the ball, it, it's something very deep. You wouldn't expect the player to have something, a, a thought like that. It, it, was it something that you learned somewhere, or was it just a natural intuition that football training must involve football? Well, you see... When I when I grew up, I didn't go to a soccer academy or anything. Yeah. But I was I always played like street soccer. Yeah. And and at street soccer, when you come there, there's a soccer ball. Yeah. So so that was all that I knew. Yeah. Once you go and play, you play with a soccer ball. And I remember uh, as a Bafana team, uh, our Victor Pereira team. Uh, our warm up was with the soccer ball. Yeah. Was, everything was with the soccer ball. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And I was even happy. I even phoned my. But which year was that? That was, was like 2008, 2009? Yeah, 2010. 2010, yeah. 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 Then, then I was so happy because everything is with the soccer ball. Yeah. But when you had that opinion uh, against machines training session, that was uh, when was uh, when was that? It was in two thousand seven eight. Seven eight. So even before Alberto Pereira um, came, you had that belief that, yeah, that, um, that you need to train with the ball. You need to train with the ball. No, you can you, you can warm up without the ball. Yeah, it's understandable. You can do some exercises with the ball. Yeah, it's understandable. Yeah, but. Don't make me not to touch the ball the way. Yeah. It is it is not what I want. Yeah. I want to play the soccer I want to move, I want to play. Yeah. I want to score goals at the I want to celebrate at the Yeah. Did you have a lot of uh, such sessions uh, with Moshin? Um, was it the kind of coach that believed in non-football training? 
was a guy that also was giving us nice exercises for the game. Yeah. But, you know, once you lose one game, yeah. on the Monday or the Tuesday, you're going to lose. Yeah. So, that, that part I hate it because of that. Yeah. Yes. After a match, maybe you lost. For the next day. Yeah. Next day you come back, you are running. Yeah. Don't even improve on on the stage that you did the previous day. Yeah. So that is where I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. there was a point where you were relegated to uh, the was it the reserve side? Yes. Did it have anything to do with uh, your beliefs like that? Uh, that was it as a result of those clashes? I think it was also something similar with that because then after that he told me that I gave him a lot of weight. Yeah. You know, he, he always had excuses. Yeah. But when I went to the reserve team, yeah. I enjoyed it very much. Because it was Ace and Dr. Puman and they it was all about football and finishing. Yes. So I enjoyed myself. Uh, it was nice. You know, it was too much of soccer. You know, when you yeah. go home and you say, oh, yeah. I played a lot of soccer today. And that's yeah. what I like. And yeah. even in the next season when I went back, I had, I had more skills yeah. than before. I could see it better. I could run into space better. Because no, you really scored a lot of goals. Eh? Yeah. So, so that was also one of the uh, things that I did in the reserve team. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can tell us about your first game for the reserve team. And before then, before, before Mushin came in, um, you had been under somebody like Ted Dimitri. I know that uh, he believed a lot in training with the ball. Yes. Ted would make us also play a lot of soccer. Yeah. Because, you know, Ted was our coach. Yeah. He was always a lot of soccer. Yeah. Then after Ted, he came to Merendorf. Yeah. Merendorf's training session was also nice. It was also soccer, running, and yeah. running. Yeah. Then Mushin came with something different. Yeah. So already it was a build up of nice soccer, soccer, soccer. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, it's just a game. Yeah. So it was. Was a little bit difficult. Yeah. David Radeve, <laughs> he complained a lot. He said that the uh, machine had actually got him out of the club. Um, he said that uh, because currently the machine had brought him to the club, and um, just before the machine left, the first time he coached country. And uh, he didn't score. And when he came back, um, he realized that David Radev had been uh, scoring a lot of goals. Do you know about that? <laughs> no, and he was not here. He was like, oh, you wait for me to leave and then you start scoring. <laughs> I don't know anything. Yeah. Maybe that time I was still a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so with your time at Chiefs, how would you like sum it up? Did, did you have a good time? I had a fantastic time. I learned a lot of Chiefs. Yes. You know, my competition with Chiefs when I arrived at Chiefs yeah. was, was strong. It was difficult to, yeah. to get into the team. You had Chiefs, you had Jacqueline Mendo, Mendo, Tomo, Tomo, Kunash. Yeah. It was competition all around. Yeah. It wasn't, you couldn't even relax and say, hey, this yeah. week I'm gonna play. Yeah. Competition was tight. And the guys, they were winning. Yeah. And I went to Chiefs after they won the league. Yeah. The next season again, we won the league. And yeah. After they won the so Tell me you were brave. Before we talk about it, you were brave to leave that uh, and go into a team where you were going to, I mean, uh, compete with that quality? Yeah, because, you know, at Vert, yeah. I was for two or three seasons. Ago. Yeah. So I was playing regularly. Yeah. We came in, we came out. I could have been injured. Friday comes, train, Saturday, I'm going to play. Yeah. It was just like that. But then I realized that I need to take my soccer to the other level. Yeah. So that is a lot. Chiefs approach me and I looked at I looked at the players that were there. Yeah. First thing that came to my mind was where am I gonna play? Yeah. Where am I gonna start playing? Yeah. And then I remember uh, after my son. Yeah. 
he told me there's only one person that's gonna know where you're gonna play. Yeah. And I asked him who's the things and he told me straight up it's yourself. Yeah. If you're gonna work, I have to know how to play. You're gonna play every weekend. Yeah. If you're here for a joy run, you won't play. Yeah. So that was also was also something that was always in my mind. And then luckily you have to buy that shoes. Yeah. It's not what they do to everybody. Even if he doesn't play, if you start shoes on the bench, after the game he will tell you what to do, what not to do. Yeah. Shoes was just that guy. Yeah. So he was, he was just one of the things. Yeah.